Alright guys, just want to do a random movie review here and just trying out some new things. I got a different microphone hooked up and I don't know if the quality is as good as the other one. And this is supposed to be the better microphone, but I'm trying to work with it. I've got the media player hooked up to the that TV, the old CRT TV, so I can play display different things on there, like you're seeing right now, which I think is pretty cool. And I can display on the back TV. What's playing on the back TV is the trailer for the movie Silkwood, which I recently watched again, and uh, I hadn't seen it since I was very young, so this movie is very nostalgic for me. And uh, I think my parents, my mom, was always a fan of Cher, and, uh, but uh, I didn't see this with my parents, I don't believe. Uh, I think my aunt had it, or saw it my aunts or something. That's what I want to believe. Um, but it's been so long. But this movie stuck with me, and it horrified me when I watched it. Uh, it's based on a true story of this woman named Karen Silkwood who worked for some kind of plutonium plant, and basically, uh, she starts. Well, she gets contaminated, I think, first a little bit by the plutonium, and somehow she, they have like a union there at the plant, and she wants to join the union and be like a negotiator with them, and they go to Washington, and um, when she get, got contaminated or whatever, they switched her to a different um, department and uh, where they were taking these x-rays of what they were doing and she basically said that they were covering up mistakes in the plant and uh, it could be catastrophic and she basically wanted to explode, expose and be kind of like a spy and uh, take, take evidence of you know what they were altering with these x-rays and um, You know, wanting, wanting them to quit doing this. And there's kind of conspiracies about what happened. And she was supposed to expose this stuff to like a New York Times writer or whatever. And anyway, she ended up dying mysteriously in a car crash. And there was, seemed to be evidence that maybe she was rammed from behind. She had documents with her before the car crash. And like after the car crash, the documents weren't found. But they did find like some drugs, like quaaludes and, and weed in the car, in her system. So I know I'm going all over the place, but this is basically a drama. And uh, it has some powerful actors in it. It has Meryl Streep, who plays the Karen Silkwood character. And it has Kurt Russell. And it has Cher. And they all live together. And... Kurt Russell's character is the boyfriend of Meryl Streep's character, Karen Silkwood, and Cher is her lesbian friend, who's a roommate. So, there's a lot of uh, relationship drama in this, um, but what horrified me about this when I was younger was that when she gets contaminated, they, um, there's like, uh, she has to like scan out before she leaves the room and like put her hands up before this thing and like, it sets off an alarm and the alarm's like horrifying and she has this friend who works at the plant also who gets contaminated first, this older lady, and when they find out that she's contaminated, she's being escorted through the hallways by these two guys and she's like wrapped in plastic, kind of like Laura Palmer in <laughs> Twin Peaks, but anyway, she... They take her to the shower or whatever, and they have to, like, scrub her down really hard. And she's all horrified. She's like, you know, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And she's all scared. And it's kind of, it's just scary as a kid, like an invisible enemy that we can't see that, how it can destroy your body. And uh, it's just crazy, the whole process. The alarm's going off and the scrubbing down. And later on, uh, Karen Silkwood's home gets contaminated and they come in with like Geiger detectors or whatever, and, or whatever they're called, but Geiger meters, I don't know. But they're going off in the home and they're like scraping off the wallpaper and they're putting like all of her possessions in bags. You see in the background right now, she's getting washed with the 
And there's with the Geiger counter, they're taking everything apart. And, you know, they're bagging up, like, pictures of her children. That's another aspect of this movie, is she is a mother, but her, she does not have custody of her children. And I think, I don't remember how far away her children live, but at the beginning of the movie we see um, they all go to visit her children. And her, um, the father of her children seems to be kind of like an asshole. And I guess the, um, his girlfriend or wife or whatever kind of is too. Um, so it's very depressing, dark movie. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Sling Blade in some ways, because it's supposed to be like rural America, and, uh, you know, it has a lot of, it's, a, it's an older movie, so it's really kind of vintage Americana. <laughs> I don't know, we see like, just like old Pepsi or Coke cans or whatever. There's a lot of smoking in this movie, like Karen Silkwood smokes like in every scene almost it's crazy <laughs> um but yeah kurt russell's character in this movie is really awesome he plays a really nice forgiving loving uh boyfriend to her pretty much Cher, like i said she's a lesbian at, at one point in the movie she kind of randomly has a um woman show up who is like her girlfriend and we don't really know that she's like a lesbian until that point but later on we find out that this girl that she was seeing was actually married to a man <laughs> so and she ends up leaving her and you know she was like well she went back to her husband or whatever like wow okay so um there's this character that plays Winston, or this this actor, I don't remember what his name was. Craig T. Nelson. Okay, he's from Poltergeist. That's why I was wondering where he's from. I'll look at the back of this DVD, I'll read that, but I'm seeing it right in front of me. Um, so, he's in here, and he is one of the guy that does like the x-ray at the shop. So he's very suspicious of her. He's also kind of like a pervert in a way like wants to force his way on women he tries to with Cher he tries to kind of with Meryl Streep's character Karen um after she gets the house contaminated and everything he ends up showing up at the house and Kurt Russell goes back to the house and Kurt Russell's like what are you doing here whatever you know uh, he ends up punching him so we kind of, you kind of put two and two together, like, this Winston character could have contaminated her um, more than what she had already been, or whatever. And so it's like, you know, why would he show up to the house, you know? <laughs> Apparently he was, like, in on something. Um, Wow, it's just, I don't know, I just love it, like I said, it's kind of just nostalgic for me, but watching it again, I'm like, I'm still thinking, you know, this is an amazing movie, um, it's a heartbreaking movie, the way that it ends, we see, like I said, she mysteriously died in a car crash, so the, in the movie, you know, they have headlights behind her, and they try to push this idea that yes, she was, like, killed by somebody else, um, it kind of ends ab abruptly, like, she's driving and at night and you see the headlights getting closer she wrecks it shows like her wrecked car getting towed um i think by kurt russell he was like he's like a tow truck driver too or something but and it's playing amazing grace so you know it's kind of emotional while that scene's happening and it starts showing like flashbacks of like happier times in the movie before or whatever very sad it was very heartbreaking for me as a child to watch this, and I didn't understand everything. And I didn't understand, like, the headlights behind the car. Because uh, it doesn't really explain it, you just, I mean, if you don't know the story or whatever. I don't know, I thought it was, like, angels or, like, God or something. I thought, like, the headlights of the car was, like, you know, like, God was coming for her or something. I thought she just wrecked on an accident by herself or something. Like, I didn't really understand all the intricacies of this so it's interesting too watching a movie as a child and, and having that perspective and then watching it again as an adult and seeing it like in a completely different light but i liked it then and it stuck with me and i like it now
I appreciate it even more now. So, I'll look at the back of this. The controversial true story that inflamed a nation. Meryl Streep, Still of the Night. I'll say, off the top of my head, I don't know what movies Meryl Streep is in, but I know that she's a popular actress, and I know that she has Trump derangement syndrome. That's what I think, because at the Academy Awards, or whatever, you know, it's always her and Robert De Niro. She's, you know, clapping and losing her mind. Unfortunately, she's a great actress in this movie. I mean, but uh, apparently she lost her mind. Stars in the stunning, provocative, and daring drama about one woman's struggle, struggle against a huge corporation. Karen Silkwood Streep lives a free-spirited existence with two friends, Drew Stevens, who is Kurt Russell, in Death Proof, it says, uh, and Dolly Pelliker, who is Cher from Moonstruck, and I haven't seen that, I need to see that. I'd, never, I'd like to see any movie that Cher was in. I've seen Mask, and I have that as well. I want to watch that again soon. Who work with her at an Oklahoma nuclear facility. It's only when she discovers she's been exposed to radiation that Karen's conscience awakens. I think that from, from what I read, this movie was like recorded in Texas and somewhere else or something, so it's supposed to like take place in Oklahoma, but I don't even think it was recorded there. Uh, but her sudden, her sudden zeal for safer working conditions may come at a high price as she alienates friends and possibly even puts her own life in peril. Now that's another aspect of this movie is how, you know, she, at the beginning you see her getting along friendly with a lot of people at work and as she starts to crack down on things um, that's going on there, they all start to be in fear of losing their job because they think that she's going to expose the business or whatever and the business is going to shut down. And so even though they agree that there's a lot of things wrong going there, they don't want to lose their job overall. And so they start to despise her. They start to give her the cold shoulder. So there's a lot of different aspects in this movie. There's the relationship drama between her and her boyfriend. There's like the friendship drama between her and Cher's character. There's the drama with her having her kids, uh, not having custody of them. There's the drama with the people at work and the boss at work and the union. And another aspect of this film is that one of the guys that's supposed to be helping her with the union is kind of like a user and, you know, he, he wants her to call him from a payphone. I, I think the implication is that they slept together. So there's a drama with that too. And he's supposed to be the one that's helping her. And he kind of is, but he's also like an asshole and he's kind of like used her and stuff at the same time. So there's that aspect of the drama, there's the aspect of the drama of the contamination from the plutonium. And so there's so much more, too, that I'm sure that's not even coming to mind. Um, but it's just drama all over the place. Um, so she alienates people at work, possibly only, possibly puts her own life in peril. Excellent direction by Mike Nichols, The Graduate. Okay, this director, I don't know if I've seen anything else by him. But I love this movie, so kudos to the director for that. With a screenplay by Nora Ephron, Sleepless in Seattle, and Alice Arlen, Alamo Boy. And a stellar supporting cast that includes Craig T. Nelson from Poltergeist, Diana Scarwood from Mommy Dearest, Fred Ward from Tremors, Ron Silver from Blue Steel, Charles Hallahan from The Thing, Joseph Sommer Witness, David Stradehart from Limbo, M. Emmett Walsh from Blood Simple, Tess Harper, Tender Mercies, Will Patton, No Way Out, nominated for five Academy Awards for Actress by Streep, Supporting Actress by Cher, Director Nichols, Original Screenplay by Efren and Arlen, and Editing by Sam Osteen. Wow, so, yeah, I mean, this is really up there in some, one of my favorite movies. You know, I could instantly watch it again, but it is sad. It's very sad. You 
know, that's how it kind of reminds me of Sling Blade too. It's like a lot of these people are kind of like average people that you would know in your life, you know. Um, they're just like average country folks, <laughs> you know, in Oklahoma. They're just working for a living, you know. And it's a dangerous job, but, you know, it pays good money or whatever, so they're there. And they're just trying to get by. And, uh, you know, she, she comes across something to kind of give herself, like, a bigger purpose. And it split, it ends up splitting up her and her boyfriend, but he does end up coming back. But, uh, it upsets him that she's pursuing this, but he also kind of gets the hint that she kind of was, had a relationship with this, uh, guy that was supposed to be helping her out, too. But, man... I don't know. I could go on and on. Anyway. Yeah, the amount of smoking cigarettes in this movie is crazy. Just watching it nowadays. Like, wow. Um, you see the guy get punched there. I don't know, man. You really, I really feel for these characters. And yeah, like I said, like it reminds me kind of Sling Blade just because of the down-home kind of people that are in it, but also just the overwhelming cloud of darkness that's over this movie. Um, you know, there are little bright spots here and there, but it's mostly just like downhill, downhill. Things are going bad, things are going bad. Uh, anyway... If you haven't seen it, if you're into dramas, definitely check it out that's gonna be it so silkwood i definitely recommend that god bless have a good day